Hi everybody, it's me again, Charles Norman, Sports Solutions LLC. We are the creators of Athletic SOS. It is a software technology that allows you, based on your uh, academics, your sports you play, the level you think you can participate at the collegiate level, and the area of the country you might be interested in. If your kid is trying to get an athletic scholarship, we can show you all the schools that they academically qualify to attend, that have their sport, and they can start moving from there, knowing all of their options and opportunities, they can start looking for those schools, let them know they're interested in those schools because we're trying to get them to go to the school they want to go to in general and have the ability to play the sport at that school. Let them know they're interested. They'll come out to see them play and you've just turned the whole game around instead of you trying to go out and get discovered. Now those coaches just need to come and see, can you really play at that level? And they already know you're interested. They already know you're academically qualified to go to school. They've knocked out a lot of the uh, guesswork out of it. And so we just turn things around a little bit in your favor as a, a family. We always give the software away, no cost at this point. Um, you look down below, I give you the code. I give you the uh, instructions for how to use the code. In fact, I'm going to start putting at the end of the video. Some people say they see the videos and they're not seeing it where I place it on YouTube so they don't get the code and all the information. Go ahead and use it. There's no obligations. I'm not going to do anything tricky on the back end. I'm not selling your data. I'm not doing anything untoward. I want to keep you guys in our family and we're going to change this thing around because what we're creating is a group of uh, athletes that are going to use their athletic skills to move themselves forward in life use it as far as they can until they can't play anymore. Um, I don't know when that's going to be, but whatever that time is, they're building up assets, people that are in their network. That's the thing we're trying to do. And as they move through life, as they try to make other accomplishments in their life, they're going to know how to go and do research. They're going to know how to uh, move forward. They're going to have a great network of people around them because they're, they're learning how to pick those up. We want to teach those kids those things, those skills, because the skill set they're going to need for the future is not the one they needed before, the one that you had as a parent, the one that I had. Uh, prior to that as a parent. Um, that's what we're all about. We're about leveraging those those athletic skills and moving as far as you can and learning how to use that to get to where you want to be the rest of your life. So in this one, I'm really only going to try to give a little bit of advice here. I, I really don't have solutions for what I want to bring up. So I'm going to talk about you rescuing you. This happens every single year. We've been doing this for a few years now and the kids come in, the school year just started, first month in, uh, the fall sports are already in action. Uh, those teams are already uh, playing for a lot of places. Some areas, maybe school hasn't started yet. Maybe they start in September, but out here it's in August. I'm in California. August school started. And some kids have already missed out on making the uh, whatever team they were trying out for the fall. They did not make varsity or they made varsity and they're not playing. I'm not going to say they didn't make varsity. That's a whole different one. I'll do a different one for that. But you made varsity, but you're not getting a lot of playing time and you're a senior. And this is huge. This happens over and over and over again. And now I've got some kids that um, the families are writing to us for, at Athletic SOS um, saying that they did not make the winter team. So um, the basketball teams, uh, whatever teams are in, in the wintertime. So, and they're concerned because they're a senior now. What do I do? I'm not going to get any playing time. And the coaches basically said, uh, we're moving forward. And sometimes it's not your fault. But before I get into what I'm going to give you advice on how I would move forward, uh, what I want to tell are the kids that are juniors and sophomores now, if you get to your senior year, you make varsity and you're not going to be playing a lot, and that comes as a surprise to you, then you haven't been following what we're trying to get you to do. You should have been playing in the summertime. You, obviously, you want to improve your game, right? You're playing travel club. You're going to camp combines. You're going to showcases. You're trying to get discovered anyway as you come into your senior year. This is that summer before your senior year is a summer where you should be locking down uh, schools that really are going to pay really good attention to you all year. Maybe they'll give you an early offer, but maybe they'll wait till later because they don't, they don't know who you are yet. But um, you should have been locking that down. The other thing you should have been doing, though, if you're a kid that's on the bubble, you knew the previous year, maybe you only played JV the year before, and now you're gonna, you know you're going to go out for varsity for your senior year, and you, you're hoping to make it, but you know you're on the bubble. You should have been pr playing and practicing with your high school team at some point during the summer. Yes, I know you want to go do those other things too, but you were getting better, you were getting trained, you were you know doing all the other things we talked about, but you should have been participating with your high school team in some matter. You should already know. Those coaches would have already let you know, hey, listen, we may be going a different way. We've got some, or you could see that the younger kids are giving them more opportunity, that you're actually not playing um, when you guys are working out or maybe you're doing some scrimmages against people and you're not getting a lot of time. You can kind of see it coming. And if you know that is coming 
then maybe you can adjust because one of the things we always talk about is positioning yourself. There's always a hole on every team that needs to be filled. If you're not getting the opportunity uh, to play, then if you can fill one of those holes, at least you'll get some time to play or the coach will see, hey, I can use this player in this situation. And so that may still get you on the court, on the field. You have to get in the game. I guess that's the best way to put it. Now, the other thing I always want to tell you as um, for, for college coaches, yes, if you're starting, you got a lot of time, you got big numbers, that's going to get you at the higher level, at the collegiate level. But the other thing is, are you playing when the game is on the line? That is huge for college coaches. So you could be a starter, you could be doing a lot of stuff, and, and you, you're a good player. But when the game comes down, it's on the line, it's the last five minutes, something's going on um, that everybody needs to perform at the highest level. If you're not on the, on the, in the game at that moment, that could be a red flag for uh, college coaches. So you've got to pay attention. You've got to, you've got to be mentally in the game at all times. So those are some of the things that you want to think about if you're going into your senior year. Things aren't locked down, and the coach is kind of playing you. But sometimes, uh, and this happens um, a lot of times, uh, especially for the boys' teams, there are schools in the neighborhood. I live in one of these suburban neighborhoods, and there's a group of kids from maybe the, the fifth grade. <laughs> They're all they kind of hang out and they play together and they kind of move up and move up and move up. And by the time they get to high school, they've come as a package. They've got all the right pieces. They've discarded the pieces that may compete. Parents out here are, are, are very different. I'm sure that you guys have seen this before, but they've sort of discarded. And now they've got this group that's going to come in from the ninth grade. Uh, by the time they're, um, they're already playing JV or some of them made varsity, but the other ones are coming up. Maybe they don't have the size yet, but they kind of come as a package. All the parents are on the same page. And here you are, this isolated senior that's going into your senior year. And now this group is ready. Maybe they're sophomores. Maybe they're going to their junior year. And that high school coach was coaching them as they moved up through the ranks and they bring them in. I've seen this happen. And I, I, it's no fault of yours that this thing's happened you're still going to have to break through. You're still going to have to either show some leadership or you got to show that you will go the extra mile or you're going to have to show something that puts you because there's still going to be a couple of knuckleheads that even in that group. And so you want to get yourself into the game. So what happens if you do everything right and you still don't get an opportunity? Go ahead and play because that shows your maturity and the fact that you're willing to do it. I know it hurts. I know sometimes you're sitting there and you know you deserve a chance to play, but you're not getting it. I just, it's nothing I can do about that, and sometimes there's nothing you can do. That coach doesn't have to answer to you, doesn't have to answer to your parents, or if they do have to answer, you guys go to the athletic director and they pull you all in the office together. They're just going to say, hey, I'm trying to move in a different direction. I've got some younger kids. We're, um, I don't feel this year is our year that we're going to be able to qualify or we're going to be able to challenge for the championship this year, so I want to get them ready. I want to get them more time. There's nothing the athletic director is going to do. There's nothing the principal is going to do. There's nothing your parents are going to do. Don't go that route. I, I say don't go that route. What you want to do is go ahead and play anyway, and now we're going to get ourselves in position for next year. So what am I going to do next year? So that's one of the things that the software gives you. If you're going to a four-year school, maybe you can look at schools in the NAIA or the Division three school. Uh, maybe they didn't give you an athletic scholarship or an offer to come play, but when you get to that school, there's always an opportunity to try out for the team. Very difficult to just try out for a team. The only way I've really seen that work really, really well is if you just have ex extraordinary size. There's something about you that, or you have this incredible speed, or you get the kids that go to the junior college. You know, a lot of people will go to junior college, and you know, it's funny to me because I hear people go, oh, I'll just go play JC, uh, you know, community college, but junior colleges are usually kids that either didn't have the grades, um, they they um, didn't have the courses to get an athletic scholarship. They they passed school. They graduated just fine, but they didn't take the right courses, and that's a, that's a big uh, thing for me. Um, the, the the rules for what courses you have to take and complete to get an athletic scholarship are laid out completely. We have a link to it in our software, so that should not catch you by surprise. I blame that one on the parents a lot of times. But the other thing to realize is those kids that are playing on junior college are really good players, and it's extremely competitive because they want to move on to four-year colleges and continue playing. So don't think you're just going to walk into JC and these are lesser players. That's not necessarily the case. So keep that in mind as you're moving forward. So the other thing is there's always a, uh, a class for that sport somewhere where they're teaching you, and it's usually the coaches from the, uh, the college varsity team that are coaching that. Sometimes they have a, a JV level. 
go join that. Still get you still at school, you're still in college, you're still doing it. So we want to put all this in together as you try to move forward. If this is that important to you, you really want to play at the collegiate level, you love this game so much that you're willing to do a little bit of sacrificing to get to where you want to get to. In the meantime, during the season in your high school season, go ahead and play and keep improving. Just keep working on yourself. Get stronger. Do whatever you need to do. Get get to play. Maybe you sit on the bench all, all year and things aren't working out for you. In the meantime, try to get a trainer for yourself. What position can I play at the collegiate level? And you want to get a trainer that's going to get you there. The other thing I always tell you guys is, whatever sports you play, what is the main factor for that sport? And I use basketball as a great example. But for basketball, if you can shoot the basketball, I mean, just clean, dead eye shooter, then you can get a chance to play somewhere. You just have to go work on that field. So what is the key thing for that sport? Get really good at that. Then the other thing you can do is, what's a specialized thing for the sport? Let's say you play football. Can you be a place kicker? Can you be a punter? Can you be, is there something specialty? Can you be a, a punt returner? You're just super quick and fast, but the, all the other aspects, you're not 100% you know, that great on your tackling and all those kind of things that are key to the game. But you can do this and you can find some special position. You're a, a volleyball player and you're just great at digging. You, if they're, you know, they're, they're smashing the ball left to right, but you just have a knack for being able to dig. Or you're a great server. Whatever that is, go and learn and get really good at that one thing and that can get you over the hump too. I really do believe if you get an opportunity to play at the collegiate level, and I don't care if you played all four years, just a couple of years, and then decided to you didn't want to play anymore, whatever's going on, when you move further through life, that sets you apart for a lot of people. I don't care if you're trying to go get a job, whatever you're trying to do in your life, that's going to come back. That's going to be on your resume forever. And you, you know, maybe when you get older, you're in your 40s or 50s, it doesn't matter as much. But at some point, someone's going to want to discuss that with you. They're going to want to talk about that because people recognize how difficult it is to get to that position, to be able to do those things. So, um, so those are the kind of things that I think you can do. I really feel bad for a lot of the kids um, when this happens to them through no fault of their own. I don't necessarily blame the high school coach. Sometimes the high school coaches are vindictive. Sometimes um, they just don't have the room. Sometimes they have a plan in place that's going to be a multi-year plan, and you're just not a part of that plan. Wrong, wrong place, wrong time situation. So um, you have to rescue yourself. And this is going to, if you can figure this out and not go and, and beg for a position or, or um, get upset about something and quit in frustration and all that sort of stuff, if you can figure a way to get where you want to get to anyway, then you'll be, you'll, you'll have master of life, man. You, you can, you can get to where you want to be at some kind of way. You're not blocked. I tell my kids, I tell all my nieces and nephews, I, I think I over lecture them all the time, but I tell them, you're never stuck. You think you're stuck, but you're never stuck. Go back, sit back and go, where am I trying to get to? What are my other alternatives? And if you, once you really get good at this, you already have all of those lanes open so that when someone is trying to block you, you don't even get upset. You go, okay, I saw this coming. You should see it coming. I saw this coming. I already have this in place over here too. So this is my alternative way of getting there. I love to go this way. This is a, a great opportunity for me. But if I can't get there this way, I can go this way. You're not stuck. But the other thing you want to do is when you get around this, whatever you're doing, whatever your new path is, when you get there, be the best at what you do. When you get when you get on the other side, because when you come in through a, a um, un, unusual way, people kind of are looking for something to be wrong here. How did you get here? You know, if you didn't come through the traditional way of getting here, if you got there, you're going to always be trying to prove yourself. And here's the other thing. As the future comes, as we move forward in, in this world, things are changing really, really quickly. I haven't seen things change this fast in a while. And so there's one thing that's universal. If you have ideas and you're willing to execute on them, even when they're not traditional, when they're not regular. If you have ideas, you can move forward on your own. But if you have ideas for, if you work for a company, if you, wherever you're working, if you can make your supervisors look better, or if you can make that company money, they will keep you around, okay? So just remember, you wanna have ideas, you wanna see things, you wanna, you wanna know so much about your field, whatever choice you're going into, that everyone's like, what is what are they talking about? I didn't even know that. People that have been in it for a long time and you're looking for what's coming next. What's the future in this field? If you can get that down. So go into something you love. I know people say don't go into something you love. You may not make any money, you know, especially if you're in art or theater or something like that. But whatever field you're in, somewhere there's a way to make money. You've got to help those people make money or you got to figure out a way 
to go, hey, if we did it this way. And so that was the other, one of the other things we talked about before. Do you want to improve? Do you want to evolve? Or do you want to evolve the field that you're in? If you can get to the point where you evolve the field that you're going into, the, the world's yours. It, it's an open book for you. You can do as much as you want to do, go as far as you want to go. You have to be somebody that is innovative in your thought process, especially if you come from a different angle than the regular way people get there. And it doesn't matter what it is, by the way. It doesn't matter what it is. You can, you can move yourself into a position where you have complete control of your life and you can go anywhere you want. All right, guys. I, I know I kind of went a lot of different places there, but I want to make this more about just athletics as we move forward. Um, I do want you guys to get the athletic scholarship. That's why I created the software. I want you to take advantage of your, of your athletic abilities, and I don't want you to get stuck. I don't want some coach or some, some person, some teacher gave you a grade that just wants to, people, and, and I say this about adults all the time, they always want to teach kids a lesson, right? You need to learn this right now. That's a bunch of nonsense. You want to give the kids the best opportunities. Kids are not going to do everything correctly. Heck, adults don't do everything correctly. But they'll give themselves a break, but they won't give you a break because they got to teach you. They, you got to learn this lesson. This is a life lesson. This will be good for you. This will do you well in the future. No, no, it won't. You should be able to say, okay, I'm going to give grace to this kid. I get it. This kid's got some issues here, and we want to work through them. I'm not going to hurt their future because I want to show them something because I'm unhappy with who I am and stuff like that. So those are the kind of things that um, I want. And for the kids, you don't get to be a jerk because you're a kid either. So you got to be able to go the other way around. You got to be able to have make couples too. You should be able to walk in that coach's office and say, hey, coach, I know last year I had, I, I've really matured. I hope you give me an opportunity uh, to prove myself for this year. And I, I'm, I'm going to be there for, you know, for the team and everything like that. You can go the other way too. And this is a great sign of maturity. So it goes both ways. But I, I'm putting more onus on the adults because we know better. We know what we've gone through in life, and we know the opportunities that were taken from us. And we don't want to repeat that because now we're in a position of power to, to do that to someone else. So anyway, uh, that's where I am. Uh, keep stacking. Kids, if you guys are watching this, keep stacking those good people in your life, that network of people that are going to be with you as you move forward. Keep, keep getting it. Find good people that are doing things maybe outside of sports. Maybe they're doing something else. Get with them. Be interested in what they're doing. Help them out if you can. And for adults, it's time for you guys to go, okay, I've always had this dream. I've always wanted to do this other thing. I know I'm busy. I got kids playing high school. I got to go to work. I got this. I got that. I've got all these responsibilities. It's time for you guys to sit down and go, okay, what do I want to do? I'm going to get started on this this year. No excuses. I'm going to start working on this. By the time the kids come out, maybe we can all work and we have a family uh, thing that we're going to try to do together. Uh, start getting that unit, that family unit back together again. Uh, we've got, I think for the last 20, 25 years, we've gotten to this independent thing and everybody's kind of moving and doing their own thing and trying to show how much better they are than the other person or are moving forward. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's great to have some individual things. But I think for the next 25 to 40 years, it's going to become the other way around. You want to get that family unit. You want to start building your family name, your unit. Expectations for if you're part of this family, this is how we do things. Yes, you can still be individuals, and maybe you go off and do something different than what the group is doing. That's cool, but we still have a standard for who we are. When people hear our name, hear our family name, this is who we are. That's what I want you guys to start developing, and that will change everything for your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids, great-great-grandkids. They'll want to match up with that, but you have to be consistent in what you're doing. All right, I've gone on another lecture here. All right, guys, best of luck to you in everything that you want to do in your future and all your endeavors. Software down below. You've got the code. You've got the, uh, the instructions for how to use the code. Costs you absolutely nothing to use the code. Move forward. If there's anybody out there that has a high school team, they're part of a high school uh, athletic department, um, you have a travel club program or um, anything like that, we do have our new system now that works so that you can see what your kids are doing. The families will do their own research. You'll be able to help them, and you guys can kind of keep those separated so we don't put any more onus on you. I'm assuming you want to help them anyway, so this is a great opportunity. Just write us at info at athleticsos.com. I'll put that down below too. And I also have a video down below, a link to a video uh, showing what Athletic SOS is because you guys may not have seen it. All right, guys, that's it. So um, we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.